We decided to settle an age old debate, my friends. How many cores do you really need? One of the reasons why we think that we can settle it better now is because unlike Ryzen, which had terrible clock speeds, only getting up to four, maybe 4.2 gigahertz on all cores, making it kind of depressing if you're looking at getting an overclockable lower core CPU, like let's say an i3 80 something, 8350K, that's what they're called. You get four cores that are fully overclockable, you can hit five gigahertz, but you can't with Ryzen. So we couldn't really test up to eight cores with high clock speed. But now, with the introduction of the best gaming CPU ever released, we have the ability to actually test this now. So we have our 9900K set up on the test bench over here. We've got it on the Z390 Godlike Gaming. We've got the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro RAM from Corsair, obviously. And then we've got the MSI Gaming X Trio RTX 2080 Ti. That's a long name. It's a long name. Anyways, so we endeavored to test from one core all the way up till eight cores. Where is the diminishing returns when it comes to playing video games, especially when you have the best graphics card on the market? So we need to go over the data. What we found, does a eight core, five gigahertz CPU actually make sense? Or should you settle for something more reasonable like a three core from AMD all the way back in 2009? Let's find out. But before I tell you all about that, let's talk about today's video sponsor, which is MSI's P65 Creator Notebook. My friends, if you haven't seen this one, it's delish. It's sleek and powerful with up to an i7-8750H processor and up to a GTX 1060 graphics card. It has the Cooler Boost Trinity system to keep all of those components nice, fresh, and cool. And it has a thin bezel on its monitor as well as an IPS level display and close to 100% sRGB coverage. It also includes the one-touch access with Windows Hello and an eight plus hour battery life. My friends, this is a gorgeous looking notebook. If you're interested, check it, them out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to MSI for sponsoring this video. So let's jump into it. So let me walk you guys through the testing methodology and then we can talk about the results. So we have 16 gigs of Corsair RAM set to 3200 megahertz. We set each core that we were testing this on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight at five gigahertz. So each core setup was run at five gigahertz, something that we really could only do on the 9900K, especially at the eight core level. Again, 2700X not being quite good enough for that. We ran all of the games at 1080p with the 2080i to make sure that the CPU was the actual bottleneck and it's not the graphics card. So best graphics card, best CPU, neutered, completely neutered to be something really bad. So I needed to sit down so that I could grab the laptop since it has all of the numbers on it. Obviously the worst performing one out of all of these is the one core because we've done this before where we had the one core at five gigahertz. You can check that out in the video up there where we compared one core on the 9900K at five gigahertz or 5.5 gigahertz versus eight really slow cores. And as we found out then, most games don't like to run when you only have one core. So in Ashes of the Singularity, we had seven FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider refused to run. Rise of the Tomb Raider didn't finish. Deus Ex Mankind Divided got 33 FPS with the 2080 Ti. Far Cry 5 crashed. Ghost Recon Wildlands crashed. Hitman, we got eight. Metro Last Light, we got 11. Witcher 3, we got 18. Fortnite, Fortnite just wouldn't. That was a nightmare. So Fortnite was a nightmare because the game would sometimes launch, sometimes not, but then when it would actually launch, it couldn't find a match. And then that one time we found a match after working on it for hours, the game crashed. So screw Fortnite with one core. And then if we take a look at the 3D Mark Time Spy, that's just, those are just deplorable numbers when it comes to uh, what the 2080 Ti is actually capable of. So let's go through this game by game and see where we find the best performance increases. So if you look at Ashes of the Singularity, everything that you see on screen, the point where we stop seeing actual accelerated returns is at five cores. So at two cores, we have 45, three cores at 70, four cores, it's 87, five cores, another jump, six FPS to 93, but then six cores, it's 94, 97, 95. Then for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the diminishing returns actually comes after three cores. You see at one core, it obviously didn't work. Two cores was 79 FPS. Then at three cores, it was 113. Four cores does give us an improvement to 116. So three FPS difference, but it's not that major. And then five, six, seven, and eight cores are all basically the exact same within the same margin of error. Deus Ex Mankind Divided, same story there. Three cores is where we start to see diminishing returns from the, the increase in cores. 
cores. We had 33 at one core, 79 at two cores, and then 94 at three cores, but then 96, 95, 93, 95, 97 for the remaining five, six, four, five, six, seven, eight cores. Far Cry 5 uh, is actually at four cores that we see it. So we didn't run one core, Two cores got us 24 frames per second. Three cores got us 113, which is a considerable jump. And then four cores is actually 136, which is 23 FPS increase. But then after that, it is it is slightly better after four cores, but not by a large margin. So 139 at five, 141 at six, 144 at seven, and 143 at eight. So all roughly within the same margin of error. Ghost Recon Wildlands, again, three cores is where we're seeing the sweet spot. 49 FPS at two cores. 78 at three, 79, 80, 78. You guys can read numbers on screen. With Hitman, it looks around six to seven cores is the best one that we could get because at two cores, 59, three cores, 87. Big jump to four cores at 110. Another big jump to five cores at 128 and another seven FPS increase at six cores to 135 and then at seven cores it's 140 and eight cores is exactly the same in metro last light we actually see the re diminishing returns come after four cores with 135 being the peak there there is 141 at five cores and 140 at seven and eight but there was also a uh, lower score at six cores so it's within the same margin of error that 135 at four cores was roughly the same which are three again it's roughly four cores 121 there compared to 84 at three cores and 119 at five cores. In Fortnite, we saw the best performance come in basically uh, everywhere because uh, obviously it's a multiplayer game and we did live benchmarking instead of doing something with a replay. And we saw our best performance at six cores, but that also could have just been because of the game. But after three cores, they're all over 200 FPS. So it's kind of just like a who gives a crap anyways. That's my stance. After 200 FPS, who gives a crap really? And what we see in 3D Mark Time Spy is that we get our best GPU performance after three cores. Obviously, the total score is a little lower because of the CPU score, which continues to increase as we go up because it's a synthetic benchmark. It's not doing both at the same time. It's testing one or the other typically. Uh, but with the GPU, the 2080 Ti is no longer really bottlenecked at three cores. And then with regards to 1% and 0.1% lows, as you can see for most of the games, it actually wasn't a big factor whatsoever. They were all roughly about the same as the average where we saw the best pickup as far as how many cores are actually happening. So not only did the average FPS pick up as more cores increase, but typically the 1% and 0.1% had higher minimums, which made it a little bit better. So we got to test something that we couldn't really test up until a couple of months ago with the 9900K. What is the conclusion out of all of that data that I just spewed to you guys on the screen? It kind of looks like three to four cores at five gigahertz is really the sweet spot for gaming. And this is, we're talking purely gaming at this point when it comes to having a 2080 Ti at 1080p. At increased resolutions like 1440p and 4K, the demand on the CPU will be less. And so these results would be completely different at those resolutions. But at 1080p with the 2080 Ti, you're getting your best performance out of roughly three or four cores. However, that doesn't mean that you should only get three or four cores for your gaming system. Because while the gaming performance might indicate that that is where the sweet spot lies. It also means that you don't have any more room, CPU headroom, in your system for doing other things on your computer while you're actually playing video games. So if you wanna have Spotify open, Discord running, even streaming, or messaging your mother on Facebook Messenger, something like that, having web browsers open while you're doing that, having any sort of process running in the background at the bare minimum cores is going to impact your gaming performance much worse than if you had a higher core count. So even though four cores, let's say four cores, that's basically where I'm okay is saying you're the sweet spot for gaming right now with no hyper threading. So if you get an i3, you're gonna be basically getting the best gaming experience that you can get, but that doesn't mean that you'll actually have the ability to do other things on your system. It's the same reason we don't recommend eight gigabytes of RAM for a gaming PC right now, because while eight gigabytes might be enough for most games, it also means that you can't do anything else while you're playing games. And I don't know about you guys, but I enjoy actually having other things going on. I don't like shutting down Chrome just to open up my gamings. That didn't make any sense.
but it made sense. Obviously, hyper-threading could impact this uh, a little bit. If you got four cores and eight threads, a la a 7700K, that probably still is at the top of where you can get for gaming. So picking one of those up used might actually be a better deal than getting one of these 9900Ks, those extra threads being able to help with the multitasking in the background. But an 8600K does just as well, six cores, no extra threads, and that means that you're getting more headroom for actually doing things on your computer versus just a proper i3 that's overclockable to five gigahertz. But as far as getting a seven or eight core processor, and when I say seven, I just mean that hypothetically, uh, it's not really worth it for gaming. Eight cores will just mean that you can do a whole lot more. This is probably going to be best for content creators and streamers and people who like to do productivity on their PCs alongside gaming, uh, which is pretty great. So. I like the 9900K. It's ridiculously expensive for what it is, but it provides a lot of value and it allowed us to do a little test that I've been wondering for quite some time. I hope you guys have been wondering it as well. Otherwise, I've just been babbling about something that nobody cares about, which I do anyways. So that's gonna wrap it up. That pretty much sums up who we are here. Don't forget that this video is brought to you by MSI's P65 Creator Notebook. Don't forget to check that out at the link in the video description for those delicious looking laptops. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content and I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too. Stop kissing people.